Good morning, friends, and welcome to day four of our 10 days of prayer. We're so excited that you're joining us on this journey. We hope you've had a chance to watch the previous recordings, the devotionals that have been shared by our staff. I'm Pastor Travis, and I'm, it's a joy to be here with you today, uh, delving into this topic for our few minutes together. I want to remind you as we get started that if you uh, haven't taken note already, we passed out a bookmark on Sabbath, make sure you either stop by the church and pick one of those up in person or look online. You can find a link to that information. There's also a link above this post uh, for our 10 Days of Prayer website that you can go to and find all the readings uh, that you can follow along with, scriptures, prayer ideas, and things to guide you in your devotional journey at the beginning of this new year. We're so glad that you're here with us. And I just want to start out with a quick word of prayer. God and Father in heaven, please be with us as we talk about you and your plan for us today. Uh, remove distractions and just guide our thoughts to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So imagine the picture with me. If any of you have ever attended a Christian school or an Adventist school, you know that a big part of that is weeks of prayer, right? And a couple of times a year, uh, we'll focus intensely, heavily upon the message of the spoken word. We'll gather together and a guest speaker will come in and uh, there is, in a sense, a great spiritual excitement and fervor that happens on those days. But how many times have you been to one of those events? Or maybe it's a, a, a revival event kind of weekend happening, camp meeting maybe, even in our own church here locally. And, and you go to one of those events and you're excited about the message, you open up your Bible more, you pray more, and then when the event is over, you go back to your routine. And within a matter of just hours or a few days, life seems to have returned to a routine and a normalcy that is probably not a good thing. Maybe you say, well, what happened to my spiritual excitement from the week before? I prayed for revival. I asked for great power and strength from the Holy Spirit. That's what we're focusing on this week, uh, is that uh, personal revival but nothing seems to have happened. What happens when that goes wrong in our lives? How can we explain it? Well, scripture gives us a few hints as to why things like that occur in our day-to-day -day cycle of spiritual walk with God. And I wanna go with you to a scripture that comes from James chapter four, verse two and three. It's in our reading for today. Uh, and that scripture says simply, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Scripture tells us. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. Wow. Heavy words from Scripture. Sometimes we don't like to hear why we are not receiving something we ask for from God. Um, but he gives us two good reasons here in this verse, and we need to examine them. The two reasons given are one, we just don't ask. Now, during a week of prayer, that's probably not the case. We're on our knees, we're in the sanctuary or at home, and, and, and we're in that mode, we're asking. But uh, what we're going for here is a regular, thorough, fervent asking of God. Sometimes it takes more than a cursory prayer uh, to really, uh, not just to reach God, because God hears us anytime, anywhere, but for Him to accomplish what He wants in our hearts. You ever had that happen? You ever, you ever uh, talked a lot? but realize that you weren't going deep in your, in your prayer with God. And maybe that's what's happened. Maybe we're, we're repeating what we know we should say, um, but we haven't truly desired it deep in our heart. And so we, we kind of forget. We say a cursory prayer and we forget to ask any more on it. Um, that is, is one good reason why we may not have the Holy Spirit impacting us in our life and reviving us like we desire. Number two, the second reason in James 4 here it gives, is because we ask with impure motives or asking only for ourselves. Now for me, that's a real zinger because there are many good reasons, but perhaps uh, wrong or misguided motives that I could ask for God's Spirit in my life. I could ask for it because I want to be noticed more or I want to be more effective in a certain task. Or maybe as a pastor, I could ask for it because I want to see more baptisms. Maybe uh, I want to see a certain number. Um, and those, while they're all good and well, could be misguided motives. I need to check in with God and make sure my heart and my motives are right, that I'm not seeking my own glory. You know, um, George Mueller, the great um, spiritual faith leader in Europe years ago, 
who ran an orphanage purely on faith, said there's no glory for God in that which is humanly possible. So if I can do it in my own means, then <laughs> it's really not bringing glory to God. And so I might be trying to, to do something for myself, not for God's empire, for his kingdom. And so uh, we got to check our motives and ask why we're praying for something. So in the context of praying for the Holy Spirit, why do you want the Holy Spirit? Have you asked that? Have you thought about it when you drop to your knees this week and say, Lord, give me revival? Why is that? Is it to make yourself feel better? Is it because the pastor is asking you to do it? Is it because something that's being done from up front? Or are there truly some deep needs in your life that you're dissatisfied with and you're ready to surrender to God and to make some changes on some things? You know, revival, community revival, church revival, really starts with one person, and that's you. It starts with me. Uh, we cannot uh, expect others to change without ourselves changing first and surrendering to God. So I thought that was a really neat point that our, our uh, reading for today brought out. We can accept the, the week of prayer talk or, or Pastor James's sermon on Sabbath and say, yeah, that's a great message, but unless we're willing to drop to our knees and say, God, what do I want to do with this? What do I need to do? Come in and seek my heart. You know, David prayed that prayer, didn't he? Search me, O God, and know my ways, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So when we get to that level of praying, we're actually changing our core motives and our, our desires, and we're, we're touching on things that the great men of God before us touched on, and that's how God used them to change the world. Um, <clears throat> Our lesson, our, our, our reading for today, uh, talked about a couple of different types of people that Paul speaks of in, in uh, second, or 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. If I, if I could, I'd like to read that for us. I, it's in your reading, or you can turn with me in your scripture uh, to read it. It says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So it lists three different categories of human beings in this passage. And it's really neat to put a tagline on these. Not that we should judge or label anybody. It's not for us to label. Uh, this is for us to, to talk to ourselves about. Which category do we fit in? <laughs> Please don't come to church and say, you look spiritual, you look carnal. We're not, we're not about that. Uh, but these three categories are important. First one that it talks about here in verse 14 is the natural man. And that's really the one we're going to focus on. The natural man is, uh, for our purposes today, the natural man is somebody who just has grown up without a Christian framework probably or currently is not involved in a walk with God. They're just following the society around them. Now it's kind of an objective term. We don't want to attach a moral value to that because it could be that very innocently they just have not been intercepted by God. Their path and God's, God hasn't, hasn't broken through to them yet for whatever reason. Um, so the future is undetermined for this natural person. Secondly, uh, there's the spiritual person, which we would obviously hope that all of us are. We're, we think on spiritual things, things are, are spiritually discerned for us, we're in a close, natural, uh, normal uh, walk with God, relational walk with God every day. Uh, and thirdly, uh, there is the person who is carnal, uh, who is of the world, and this person follows their fleshly lusts, and it's a more intentional kind of sinning uh, rather than um, a, a sin of ignorance or omission that the natural person might experience. So uh, your lesson, or your, your reading for today, talked about how those last two are really kind of church members. Mm, I might argue with that a little bit uh, because I think it's possible for someone to sit in a pew for years and not necessarily be converted, not necessarily have that spiritual walk with God. Um, they could be somewhat like the natural person. They could just be following someone to church. But in general, I think that's a good, good way of separating it mentally. Um, but the, the natural man, the natural man is one of those you are in on today because uh, we'll probably discuss the other two later this week. The natural man. Do you know someone who, by whatever chance, whatever circumstance, has basically given themselves to um, just the world around them and just followed whatever is there? Um, I want you to think of a name of a person in your mind today, and I'd like you to pray for them. As we close today, I want to, to lift up that person to God 
and to pray for them earnestly, fervently. It could be a neighbor, a coworker, a family member, somebody who was not taught to love God, not didn't exercise their faith um, fervently, and is just not in the habit of knowing God. Uh, I want to pray for them specifically as we close today and make that our, our prayer focus. We're also asked to pray for the Holy Spirit to inspire and bless our church ministries and its leaders. Uh, you know that, that that personal revival would, would, we've prayed for our staff of the church, but let's, let's bring that to the next level and, and let's talk about those who are in ministry leaders. We have so many in our church and let's pray for them today. Uh, will you bow your heads with me as we close with prayer today? Gracious Father in heaven, we're so grateful that you are willing to come and give us uh, the Holy Spirit when we seek it. Lord, we repent today for times when we have not, um, for whatever reason, asked for the Holy Spirit like we should, we forget, uh, or maybe we ask casually without a real understanding of what that means when the Holy Spirit wants to come in. That we have to empty ourselves and give ourselves room for your Holy Spirit to invade our lives. So we pray today, Lord, that you would forgive us for those times. And we sincerely ask, Lord, today that if we're not ready for the Holy Spirit, that you would make us ready, that you would carve out a place in our heart for your um, Holy Spirit to invade and live and fill our lives with personal revival. Father, we also uh, repent for times where we may have asked with impure motives for our own glory or for uh, to please someone around us. Lord, help us to ask for your glory and your glory alone. We think today, Lord, of these people that are, are called natural believers or natural men, excuse me, um, men and women around us who uh, live their lives just by following the culture around them. Lord, this culture in our world today, we've seen this week especially, is not godly, is not listening to you, is not guided by your Holy Spirit and influences. There's hatred, there's division, there's selfishness all around us. And so we just pray for uh, our neighbors and our friends and coworkers who, who might just be caught up in that, that, that crowd mentality, that flow, that you would reach them, Lord, and use us if possible to reach them. That they may hear your voice somehow, some way, that still small voice or maybe a direct voice from a friend, a word from someone listening today to speak into their lives and that they may hear it and answer it and respond to it is our prayer. Use us however you see fit. And we ask this not for our own sake or glory, but for your kingdom's sake, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening today. And we just want to encourage you to continue praying for revival. And we look forward to seeing how God is going to bless us this week in your home, in your heart, and in our church and community. Have a great day.